Hello, I'm Anna Dashinska and I work at ECA in the team developing our chemicals database ECACHEM, where I'm responsible for the classification and labeling inventory. This video will help you get familiar with the inventory, how to access it, search for substances and classifications, and what data you can find. The CNL inventory is a part of our chemicals database ECACHEM. You can access it at chem.eca dot europa dot eu or through search for chemicals on the ECA website. On the landing page you will see the search bar. Here you can do a simple substance search using a chemical identifier such as an EC or CAS number or UPAC name. You can also search with a CLH index number for substances with harmonized classifications. Now I'll show you how to find the classification information for a substance on ECACAM. I will use the substance Diron as an example. The search results show all substances containing the word Diron in their name. Next to each substance name there are EC and CAS numbers when available to further help you to find the right substance. To view classification and labeling data, I will click on the name of the substance I'm interested in. This will direct me to the substance overview page where all available information on this substance in ECACAM is shown. The classification and labeling information for the substance can be easily found in a dedicated block right here. Now, let's take a closer look at the information displayed in the classification and labeling block. On the left, we have a summary of different classifications available for the substance. These are separated into harmonized classifications, if applicable, and classifications submitted by industry under the CLP and REACH regulations. If there is a European Union harmonized classification and labeling for the substance, then this classification is also displayed in the classification and labeling block together with uh, the name as it is specified in Annex 6 of the CLP regulation. If the substance does not have harmonized classification, then the most highly ranked industry classification is shown instead. I will talk more about this a bit later in this video. For Diron, the classification and labeling block shows that there are two different harmonized classifications. To see more detailed information, I can click on View Details or use the link above the counter. Alternatively, I can use the quick link in the left side menu. All these approaches will lead me to the same page with the information about the harmonized classifications for Diron. To understand what the two harmonized classifications are, I click on the tab at the top. Here I can see that in addition to the harmonized classification that it's currently in application, there is also an upcoming future harmonized classification. When I select one of these classification options, I can see the ATP in which the classification was introduced, the entry number, as well as application timelines of these classifications. The elements that are displayed under the harmonized classification details are hazard class and category, hazard statement code, affected organs, route of exposure, labeling information, specific concentration limits, M factors, acute toxicity estimates, and notes. All these elements come from Annex 6 of the CLP regulation for this entry. Next, let's go back to the Substance Overview page and have a look at the industry classification. 
I see that there are five different industry classifications available. As for harmonized classifications, I can access this information either from the link above the classification counter or from ECACAM left side menu. Now, I will click on classifications to see a list of all available industry classifications for this substance. In this list, I can see five different classifications coming from rich registrations and CLP notifications. In this case, all five classifications come from active industry submissions. If a classification has been submitted by companies that since then have stopped producing or importing the substance, this would show us inactive. At the top, there is a classification jointly submitted by the rich registrants of the substance. The percentage tells me that this classification represents over 60% of the classifications submitted by industry. Other available classifications come from notifications under the CLP regulation. When, like for Dyron, there are multiple classifications, these are sorted based on their frequency. In addition, priority is given to those originating from the highest rank source, such as rich joint submissions, and those marked with the highest rank status indicated as active. The last update date gives an indication of when the last submission with this classification has been made. Elements that are displayed on the industry classification page are hazard class and category, hazard statement code, affected organs, route of exposure, labeling information, variant notified, specific concentration limits, and then factor. If I hover my mouse over the hazard statement or pictogram codes, I can see the textual explanation. Clicking on the icons gives me indication on the affected organs. Another piece of information that I can see at the right top corner of the classification table is whether the classification elements are submitted and aligned with the CLP Annex 1. That is whether the hazard category and statement are consistent with each other. I want to emphasize that this is about consistency. It is not a statement on whether the classification is correct. Based on the classification, in the table below, the corresponding labeling derived from CLP Annex 1 is displayed. For additional information and assistance, visit our support page that offers a lot of material to guide you in using our chemicals database. If you have questions, contact us by clicking on the support button in ECACAM. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has helped you get more familiar with ECACAM classification and labeling inventory.